So one of the biggest advantages that comes with selling options is you can quite literally customize your chance or your probability of making a profit, right? So whether you wanna give yourself, let's say a 60% chance of profit and also have those profits be sufficiently large, you can do that. Or if you wanna give yourself a much higher chance of making a profit on any given trade, maybe 90% or 95%, you can do that as well. Although of course, in those cases, your profits will be much smaller. And that's just because markets are very efficient at pricing the risk that you're taking. Now, of course, at face value, having a super high chance of making a profit or having a super high win rate sounds very enticing, of course. I mean, who wouldn't wanna win on the vast majority of their trades? But that being said, does having a super high win rate necessarily guarantee that you're still going to be profitable in the long term? Well, that's the question we're gonna answer in this video. Hey everyone, this is Scott here again to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in particular for this video, I'll be showing you guys a trading simulator that I programmed with some basic Python code. And it's gonna show you quite definitively that there are some major downsides and pitfalls that come with having a super, super high win rate when selling options. And as a result, in my opinion, you should not be pursuing this kind of strategy. But as always, before we dive in here, in case you are brand new to the channel, again, my name is Scott, and I just wanna let you know that you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. All right, so first, before I can actually show you the simulation itself, I need to give you guys some brief context around the actual simulation. So basically the way this is going to work is I'm going to simulate five different traders with my program here, and they're all going to make the exact same kind of trades. Moreover, each trading account is going to begin with a starting capital of $25,000 and every single monthly expiration cycle, so essentially 12 times a year, each trader is going to sell a short strangle on some stock. And in case you don't know, a short strangle is a combination of selling both an out of the money call option and also an out of the money put option at the same time. And in particular for these strangles, the strikes of the contracts will be chosen at a two standard deviation range, which basically means every trade is gonna have a statistical probability of making a profit of 95%. So obviously a very, very high chance of making money here. And also I will show you some very concrete examples of these kinds of trades in Thinkorswim here in a moment. Additionally, each one of these strangles is going to be made with 30 days until expiration and also they will be held all the way to expiration. And then once a trade comes to an end at that expiration date, then this whole process is going to be repeated for a total of 500 trades for each one of these traders. So basically 500 monthly expiration cycles equates to about 40 plus years of trading. So essentially with this simulation, we're gonna look at someone's entire trading career to see if in the long term, having a super, super high win rate does guarantee profitability. And then also for some added detail here, all the prices of the options as part of these strangles are going to be calculated based on the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And then finally, the stock price at the end of each expiration cycle is going to be chosen at random based on the normal distribution curve or otherwise known as the bell curve. So because stock price fluctuations do pretty closely follow the bell curve, then this is going to be a pretty accurate way of simulating where stock prices are going to be at the end of each expiration cycle. And essentially this means that in the majority of cases, the stock price by expiration will be somewhere in the near vicinity of where it was when the trade was first made. But on more and more rare occasions, the stock price will move by a larger and larger amount. Right, so basically with a 95% win rate, you're gonna be making money about 95% of the time, but that still leaves 5% of the time for the stock to move by perhaps a huge amount and for you to face some pretty large losses. So really at the core of the simulation, we're gonna see if those rare but perhaps very large losses are going to have a serious negative impact on the long-term profitability of having a super, super high win rate. And so with that being said, now at this point, we're gonna jump over to my computer here and I'll first briefly show you some very concrete examples of the exact kind of trades we're gonna be simulating here. And then after that, I'll run the simulation and we'll discuss the results. So let's get started. All right, guys, so for this simulation, let me first briefly show you the kinds of trades that it's going to simulate. And so, for example, what I'm showing you here in Thinkorswim is SPY. This is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. 
And this here is a great candidate for really any kind of option selling strategy, mostly because it is the most liquid product in the market. So therefore, it's super easy to get filled on your orders at great prices. And there are also dollar wide strikes across a huge wide range of price points. So therefore, you can really pinpoint the exact strikes you want to choose for your position uh, with a great level of detail. So for example, let's now come over to the trade tab and take a look at the option chain here. And for this example, we'll go into the June 17th monthly expiration cycle with 34 days left to go. Unfold that tab here. And then we'll scroll down to the at the money option contracts. And so like I mentioned earlier, we're going to simulate five different traders, each making 500 trades, all short strangles on a product just like SPY. And each trade is going to have a 95% chance of turning a profit. And moreover, each trade will be placed with about 30 days till expiration. So that's why I chose the June cycle here with 34 days, pretty close to 30. So again, every trade is going to have around a month until expiration, and each trader is going to make 500 total trades. So therefore, in the case of SPY here, the current price is right around 400 bucks per share. And so if you wanted to place a strangle that had about a 95% chance of turning a profit by the expiration date, that means for both contracts, the call and the put, we're going to sell those contracts right around the two or three delta. So as you can see in this column right here for the call options, as well as the same column here on the puts, these are the deltas for all these option contracts. And again, we're going to go to around the two or three delta, probably the two delta on both sides. So that means for the call option here first, we'll have to scroll down quite a bit. And the two delta contract is right there. And the strike of this call option is 453. So that's quite a bit away from the current stock price of SPY right now. And then on the put side here, let's scroll back up and go way up. And right there is the first two delta put option contract with a 305 strike. Now briefly, let me go ahead and right click on this contract and we'll actually set up a sell order for this strangle so you can see how much credit we would collect for this kind of position. So we go to sell and then strangle right there. And that brings up an order down below to sell one contract of the 453 strike call and also at the same time, one contract of the 305 strike put option. Now, as you can see here, the total credit you're going to collect for putting on this position is only about 70 bucks. That's a very, very small amount of money for trading a $400 product. Now, of course, that should make sense because market pricing is very efficient. So if you have a trade like this that has a very, very high chance of making a profit, well, then your profits are going to be quite small. And this here is also where another major danger comes in place with these kinds of positions because in order to make your overall profit somewhat adequate or somewhat satisfactory, you're going to have to sell many, many contracts, right? So for example, if I go ahead and pull up the calculator real quick here, we'll do some basic math. Let's say I make this kind of trade every single expiration cycle 12 times a year. But like I mentioned there, instead of selling just one contract each per expiration cycle, let's say we sell five contracts. So therefore collecting about 70 bucks per strangle. So 70 and then times five contracts, that's 350 bucks of starting credit per month basically. Then in the best case scenario, if these contracts expire worthless every single time and we get to keep this full amount of credit, well, let's multiply this by 12 for the 12 months in a year. That's a profit of $4,200. And then finally, if we divide this by our starting capital, let's say in January, and for the simulation, we're going to start with a beginning capital amount of $25,000. That means in the best case scenario over one year, you could make about a 17% return. Not too bad. That definitely beats the S&P 500 most years. And then one final thing, let's also take a look at the buying power effect for this position here. So we'll click on confirm and send. Now just selling one strangle on SPY here is going to cost initially about $4,000. So therefore, if we change this to five contracts each and then go to confirm and send again, now the initial buying power is about $20,000. So again, if we're starting out with $25,000 of capital, you could technically afford to put on maybe one more contract. But you definitely also want to leave some buffer for this buying power to potentially expand because again, these are naked option positions. So therefore, if SPY in this case really moves against your position here, this buying power effect will expand. So once more, we're going to leave about $5,000 of cushion, so to speak, to accommodate any expansion in that capital requirement. And then finally here, before I show you the actual simulation, let me just give you a visual sense of just how much a product like SPY or any asset that you're trading this kind of strategy on has to move to actually give you a loss by the expiration date. 
So once again, here's the price action chart for SPY. And for this first trade here, for this example, basically, the call strike, right, is at 453 right there. And the current price of SPY is all the way down here at just above 400. So clearly on the upside here, SPY has to move by a tremendous amount just to get above your call strike. And then on the put side here, the strike was at 305, which you can't even see on my chart here. I could possibly change the axes on this chart here. Let me try doing that. And yeah, I still can't even get down to all the way to three. Well, maybe I can actually. 305 is right there. So once again, SPY has to fall by a tremendous amount just to get down and go below potentially my short put strikes there. So ultimately, it might seem like these kinds of trades could be a great way to potentially make some consistent returns over the long term. You have a super high chance of making a profit on every trade. And for the most part, most of the time, your option contracts will just expire worthless and you'll keep the full amount of credit. But as you'll see here with the simulation, all it takes is for one major black swan event to come around and your entire account could be completely blown to pieces. So now at this point, we're going to come over here and take a look at the Python script I wrote, which is going to run the actual simulation. And if I come up here to the top and click on this button, you can see the actual configurations for this uh, program here. So once again, we're going to simulate five different traders or five different portfolios, all making the exact same kind of trades that I showed you there in Thinkorswim. And just FYI here, when I say trader or portfolio, that's represented here in the configurations with the trials. And then in each trial or each trader is going to make 500 trades each. 500 short strangle trades with a 95% chance of making a profit on every one. And finally, each trader is going to start out with an initial capital amount of $25,000. And also, like I just showed you in Thinkorswim there, because we can't afford to put on multiple contracts with $25,000, that means for every strangle that a trader makes here, a simulator trader makes, each strangle is going to consist of five contracts. And again, the reason why we're doing that is because you pretty much have to to give yourself the potential to make your annual returns satisfactory, right? Otherwise, with just one contract per expiration cycle, your profits are going to be very, very insignificant and not even worth the risk of making these kinds of trades. And so with that said, now I can just come down here and click OK and then just go up here and click on this play button and begin the simulation. And here we go. This is the output of that simulation. It's a graph that will show you how the account values fluctuated across those 500 trades. So as you can see here on the X axis, this shows you trades numbered from zero all the way to 500. And then on the Y axis here, this shows you the account value for each trader or each trial basically. And then on the top left here, you can see the color coding scheme for each different trader. So basically the line in blue here represents trial number one or simulated trader number one. Then the orange line is trader number two, green line is trader number three, so on and so forth. So now focusing on this graph here, like I said, every trader starts out with a beginning capital amount of exactly $25,000. And then for every expiration cycle, each trader sells a short strangle on a stock like SPY and sells five contracts every time. And those positions are always held all the way until the expiration date. And so as you can see here in the very beginning, all portfolios were starting to do pretty darn well. It looks like most of them got up to a portfolio value above $40,000. That's awesome. And so up until this point, everything was looking good for everybody in the simulation. And then as you can see here with trial number four, basically, or trader number four, things started to fall apart, right? Even with a super high probability of making a profit on every trade, that still leaves the possibility that on some very rare occasions, the stock could move by a huge amount, which therefore would create some very, very large losses. And you can see here, this was the first occurrence of a very, very large loss where the portfolio fell from a high of around $50,000 down to around looks like maybe, maybe $15,000. So that is a huge loss to incur in basically one or two trades there. And then this trader tried to make back some of those losses and then ultimately got hit again with another black swan type event. And ultimately this time here was the final undoing of that person's account and it just went right into the ground and actually ended up far below zero. And the same exact thing happened with trader number two, which you can see there in orange. Although this person definitely lasted a bit longer and got up to around, looks like maybe $55,000 in their account. Very, very nice. But once again, after making about 150 or 60 trades, a black swan event came around and this person's portfolio went right into the ground. And then also the exact same thing happened to the first trader as well, trader number one. 
And this is especially unfortunate for this person because their account value got all the way up to just under $80,000 before everything began to fall apart. Now as for traders number three and number five here in green and purple, these simulated traders definitely got a bit lucky and did not encounter any major black swan events. Although of course, as you can see here, there still were many instances of facing some pretty large losses along the way. But in the end, it looks like trader number three was the winner of all five simulations and their portfolio came out to a value of just above $80,000. Very, very good. And trader number five was only very, very small ways behind that. But also one final thing I want to point out on this chart is this huge zone right here, especially for trader number three here in green, where their portfolio was steadily decreasing in value across hundreds and hundreds of trades. So clearly, even with a super high chance of making a profit, that does not mean your portfolio, if you are somewhat lucky and you do end up making money over a long period of time, it does not mean you're going to consistently make money every single month or every single expiration cycle, right? There are definitely going to be times, perhaps many, many months in a row where your portfolio is steadily decreasing in value. And that's just the reality of things. But ultimately here, in my personal opinion, this kind of approach to option selling is very, very dangerous because number one, with each trade, you're only collecting a very, very small amount of credit. And over time, that's still not going to add up to a whole lot to possibly compensate for large losses. And then secondly, in order to even collect a somewhat significant amount of credit for each expiration cycle, you have to sell many contracts and therefore take on a huge amount of risk. Right, keep in mind, if you sell five contracts on a product like SPY, which is 400 bucks per share, the notional value of that, because again, each contract is tied to 100 shares of that stock, that means the notional value is a total of 500 shares of SPY, which equals $200,000. So of course, if your account only has $25,000 in it, you're obviously controlling a huge amount of notional value with a very small amount of capital. And that's why in a black swan type event, you could be totally blown out. And that kind of thing could happen after many, many years of successful trading, right? With a super, super high chance of making a profit, you could go many, many months or years without incurring a major, major loss. But if and when, that kind of black swan event does happen. For example, last uh, or two years ago in 2020 with a huge COVID crash, that kind of event, which happens maybe only once per decade, could be enough to totally take you out of the game. And also all this still applies to the defined risk version of these kinds of strategies. So iron condors or credit spreads, although of course those are definitely more safe, there's less risk involved. So you might be able to endure black swan events much better than with strangles or naked puts and things like that. But still, you have to put on so many contracts that eventually, when that kind of event does roll around, you still run the risk of totally getting blown out. So ultimately here, guys, I do think a much better balance between risk and reward is to use these kinds of strategies. These are still great strategies, but to use them with around a 60 to 70% chance of profit. Because once you start trading around that probability of success, you will collect a much, much higher credit, which in my opinion, much better justifies the risk that you're taking. And then also, of course, on top of that, you must have great defense to manage your trades and prevent these kinds of catastrophic events from blowing you out of the game. Right again here in the simulation, all trades were just held to expiration. No defense mechanics were used. So in cases like this where a black swan event comes around, and especially if you are using naked option strategies like in the simulation, you have to do something to defend your trades and keep your losses in check. And that could come in many forms, like perhaps just buying back your contracts and cutting your losses. You could roll your contracts out in time to the next expiration cycle and change your strikes at the same time. You could short or buy shares of stock to basically delta hedge. Doesn't matter as long as you have a proper plan in place and you stick with it. And so with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.